Hi listeners, it's Kat here from Castagast. I just wanted to take a minute outside of the show to let you know about Alter Ego Empowerment Coaching. It's time to invest in your relationship with yourself. We all have a tendency to put other people or tasks first, but in doing so, we can sometimes neglect our relationship with ourselves. Let me be your advocate and show you a kinder, gentler way to treat the most important person in your life, yourself. Alter Ego Wellness offers life coaching to help you achieve the life you desire through interactive online coaching sessions. We also offer online yoga and meditation classes. If you think Alter Ego Wellness may help you, please feel free to contact me, Catherine, at alteregowellness at outlook.com or at Alter Ego Well on Instagram. Okay, now back to our show. Ooh, yeah. That was good. Welcome to Cast a Guest. <laughs> I'm your host, Duke Nukem. <laughs> And I'm gonna lay some true crime on your fucking alien ass. Ooh. No, it's it's me. It's John. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know y- you saw the title for this fucking video, so I'm not even gonna waste time. I don't even have to give you a list of what's in this video. It has a kill dozer. Make your own fucking joke. <laughs> I'm John. And I'm Cass. And this is Castagast. <laughs> Everyone. Oh boy, hi. How how oh, are you? Shoot, we're here again. My goodness. You Episode 63. Often? Shut up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What do we have today? Is it a good one? You know, John, I've heard you. Yeah. I've heard you falling into a deep depression over our stories. So Yeah, they've been pretty fucking dark and dank. This one is like not like super happy, but it's not as depressing as our norm. Okay. I'm I'm ready for it. I feel good about this one. Good. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. why don't you give us our disclaimer? All right. Okay. I'll give the disclaimer. Cue the fucking music. Mm. Hi, <laughs> right, folks. My God. We here at Castagast have a lighter touch to true crime. The lightest touch you could possibly imagine. We are like the slowly approaching tweezers. Descending upon the overgrowth of (laughs) hair protruding from the middle of your eyebrows, trying to connect them, clutching the follicles of true crime and plucking them out of the unibrow of podcasts. And the reason we have to have this air of levity is because true crime sucks. Always has and always will. Don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. You know it sucks. That's why you tuned in. And we have to go to work. By God, we have to go to work and make money elsewhere, and we can't be depressed because we have to be productive. Otherwise, we'll get fired, and then we'll get poor, and then we can't do this fucking podcast. So if you are not a fan of making fun of and ridiculing and belittling murderers and rapists and their shithole families that created them and all the other pieces of shit that make it easier for them to do what they do, if you don't like that, you're a goddamn fucking idiot, and you should be shamed publicly in the middle of town square but for the rest of you you're cultured and intellectual and i welcome you to our podcast and grab yourself something that uh, just puts you in a good mood and let's sit back relax and get right pissed while we get pissed off bless bless your hearts and good luck Wonderful. When your disclaimer started, we were at 1.45. Yeah, well, well, I had to put the stupid dog away. <laughs> Fucking boomers with Our their phones. Our listeners are pro-dog, so I would tread carefully calling dogs stupid. Especially in front of your wife, too. That's it. I'm going to do I'm gonna do an animal cruelty video. Yeah, right. I'm going to do it. I'll yeah. do the research. I'll find the worst one. It'll be like the cannibal holocaust of true crime. No one would listen, and I wouldn't record it with you. No, fine, I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself with and the cats. And I won't post it. I will post you it. You don't know how. I know how. 
<laughs> I'm a millennial. I can figure it out. Are you ready? Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? <laughs> you think you're talking to a boomer who can't figure out a USB? Yeah, I know how to fucking work web, web, web-based <laughs> applications. I know how to work the World Wide Web. <laughs> The WWW. All right. All right. Are you uh, ready? No. Okay. I'm ready now. Let's get on with the goddamn show. Okay. What do we got for us today? What do we got? Our story today takes us to Granby, Colorado. Granby. How do you spell it? Granby. Granby? Yeah. G R A N. Because well, you said it was like. B Y. You said it was like two words, like Grand B. No, I said Granby. Welcome to Granby. We're just two miles down from Big Wasp <laughs> and Little Hornet down down south. But before our travels, we'll make a quick stop in South Dakota. Oh, why? Because that's where Marvin Haymeyer was born. Marvin. Yeah, Marvin <laughs> Haymeyer. The guy with that name. He was born on October 28th, 1951. Is he the bad guy? Not much is known about Marvin's childhood. All right, all right. 1951, folks. You know what's coming. Boomer alert. Fuck these boomers. Fuck these yuppies. And fuck everybody, now that I think of it. Not much is known mm. about Marvin's childhood, but he was described as likable and that he would bend over backwards for anyone. Is that because boomers are so old they don't have, like, written records, so we only know <laughs> through oral tradition? <laughs> in the early 90s, around the age of 40, Marvin packed up his life in South Dakota and made his way to Granby, Colorado. South Dakota? In 1992, Marvin had purchased two acres of land and had constructed a small welding shop where he operated his business as a muffler repairman. A muffler repairman yeah. was able to buy two acres of land and build his own shop. In the 90s. I like, I did... fucking boomers. Through my research, it was about $40,000, I think. Fuck them. It's not that much. No, it's it, not It a is lot. a lot, they, but it, it, absolutely doable. Just boomer bought, not... Just bought my house for fucking nothing. <laughs> for peanut shells and, and good house. wishes. It wasn't his house. I don't it was give a business. shit. It's whatever. Just... I would love to be able to buy enough space for my own business. Yeah, well, what's your business? Oh, shut up. It's, it's this fucking podcast. <laughs> Which we can do out of our oh, shut our up. dining room. Well, you hate the boomers as much as I <laughs> no. do. Come on. Ten years later, in 2001, the city of Grand Lake had approved the construction zoning for a concrete plant on the land next to Marvin's. Marvin had you. What kind of plant is a concrete plant? This is it like a, like a deciduous or... Oh, my God. Is it like a fern? You're so stupid. With little concrete berries. Marvin had... <laughs> uh, nope, that's an asphalt plant. You don't want that. <laughs> Marvin had used this space as a shortcut access point from his shop to his home. So this had angered him greatly, now knowing that he would not have access to that space anymore. Oh my God, you got to walk around. Well, he wouldn't walk. He would drive. Marv- oh, f- fuck off. You didn't say that Marvin got his driver's license. <laughs> He's 40. <laughs> so what? You're fucking 36 and you don't have your driver's hey, license. Hey, we live in the city. I don't need it. You don't live in the city. <laughs> People still refer to this place as rural. No, they do not. Yes, they do. No. Yes, they do. No. Oh, fuck off. Marvin had appealed this decision saying the construction would block off the access to his house, but his appeal was denied. And he was also fined $2,500 for not having a septic tank on his shop's property. <laughs> I love it. It's like, no, fuck you. We're not moving it. Your name is Marvin. You're an idiot. And you don't have a place to put your poo. So fuck you. You just dug a hole. Or maybe went home. What? Because <laughs> his home and his shop were on the same oh, land. Get away from me. <laughs> he continued appealing and was denied each time. Now, with his anger growing, he had come up with a plan. Marvin was a proud owner of a bulldozer, which he had purchased years back with plans of making a new route for his shop. But now, he had a new plan for his bulldozer. He intended to turn the bulldozer into a killdozer. Oh my god. <laughs> is, that, is that what he called it? Yeah. What a stupid twerp. Our is- story today is called The Killdozer. <laughs> yeah. What is this, bro force? Oh, thank you. Thank oh you. Terracopter. <laughs> what is it called? What is it called? Terracopter. 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 Killdozer. Insert reference here. <laughs> oh, my God. 
It sounds like a Stephen King book. I know. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Kill a dozer. <laughs> Yeah. The, how fast do bulldozers go? Like not you, very I, fast. I feel like you could dodge a kill dozer. Well, let's get to that. All right. It took Marvin about a year and a half, but he had customized and souped up a Komatsu D three five five A bulldozer okay. into a makeshift war machine. Makeshift war machine. The dozer was outfitted with armored plates covering almost the entirety of the dozer's cabin. The armor also covered the engine and most of the dozer's tracks. He constructed these armored plates by poured concrete over steel sheets. Oh, Jesus. The concrete (laughs) surround... Wait until you see a picture of this thing. The concrete surrounding the dozer was nearly one foot thick. Oh, jeez. How would it even move? Like, this thing... I'll get to that, too. Holy shit. This made the kill dozer resistant against explosives. Like, what do you expect, like, Taliban rocket launchers? <laughs> For his visibility, he had installed video cameras on the outside of the killdozer and had mounted two monitors on the dashboard of the cabin. Oh, my God. These cameras were all protected with three-inch clear bulletproof shields. There were nozzles with compressed air to blast away any dust or debris from these cameras. Oh, my goodness. There were fans and an air conditioner installed in the cabin for Marvin. Then he made three gun ports to fit a 22 caliber rifle. Holy shit. A 308 caliber semi-automatic rifle and a 50 caliber rifle. So what you're saying is Marvin was a bit of a handyman and he had time to kill. These gun good one. Oh, That's <laughs> if I'm not intended. Uh, it's nice to have a hobby. I wonder what he could do. You know, on Minecraft, that'd be pretty. Oh incredible. Yeah. yeah! Shut the fuck up. These, <laughs> these were all—all all those gun ports were surrounded with armor as well. Of course they were. On June fourth, two thousand and four, Marvin was ready to execute his plan. He had secured himself inside his killdozer, and was ready to take out anything in his path. Oh, please let me. Please let me forget. Like he left like the keys in or something. <laughs> the lights were on. <laughs> he had no battery. No. He exited his shop in the killdozer and headed towards Granby. Oh, God. He first plowed through the construction of the concrete plant. Then he made his way through the town hall, the home of a former judge. Oh, Jesus. And the judge had already passed away, so he plowed through the widow's home. Oh, my God. A hardware store and other residential homes. Of course, through this catastrophe, there were many attempts to stop Marvin in his tracks. But he had prepared his killdozer for that, and the attempts hadn't made much effect in stopping him. This attack on Granby took over the course of two hours. Like, what were people trying to do to stop him? Like, the like the cops and everybody tried... Like, they're opening fire shooting. on it? Exactly. Oh my god, this must have been crazy to watch. He had demolished over 163 buildings... Yeah. As well as knocking out utilities for the city and the residents of Granby. <laughs> Holy shit. That's, this guy's fucking crazy. Just as the governor was securing assistance from the National Guard, which oh my included God, really? which included a tank missile and helicopters. Oh my god, a tank missile. <laughs> Marvin was plowing through Gamble's hardware store and his killdozer had gotten stuck in the basement's foundation. Ah, stupid ass. Likely satisfied with his destruction, Marvin had killed himself in the cockpit of his killdozer. We'll we'll oh, get to more. So this so he knew like this was game yeah. over. Marvin's demolition had cost seven million dollars in damages. Thankfully, aside from Marvin taking his own life, no other resident was harmed. Really, mm-hmm. no one was harmed. No one was harmed. He was plowing through all mm-hmm. kinds of shit, and no one got killed. Yeah, thankfully. So uh, his kill dozer was ineffective. And thankfully, like after he plowed through the first building and was making his way, everyone was infect- effective at letting everyone know what was happening, mm-hmm. including like the police of the city. So. People were already vacating yeah. by the time he was blasting through the town. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Investigators began their investigation, yeah. and they believe each targeted destination was connected to a zoning battle. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. This, <laughs> yeah. this is amazing. Holy shit. They also believe that Marvin had used a crane that he had on his property to lower the lid of the killdozer, essentially sealing himself inside. So he knew... This was game He over. was never getting out again. When they searched Marvin's home, they had found an abundance of notebooks and audio tapes describing his plan and motivation. Marvin had plenty of visitors over while constructing the killdozer, and they had never noticed it. This had fueled Marvin... What? 
they, yeah. they didn't notice he was making a fucking no. war like, machine. Like he had a shed and everything, but they, they never noticed it. And so this had fueled Marvin even more to attack, stating in one of his journals, quote, it is interesting to observe that I was never caught. This was a part-time project over a year and a half period, and there was a 2,000-pound lift fully exposed. Somehow, their vision was clouded, end quote. You know, they say the best things hidden are in plain sight. Yeah. It was announced on April 15th, 2005, that the town was now going to scrap Marvin's killdozer. Oh, they weren't going to send it to the Ukraine? Well, they were... They scattered its parts in multiple different scrapyards to ward off any of the town's residents taking pieces for souvenirs. Marvin's journal also outlined his target list, which included the buildings he was successful in destroying, a Catholic church, which he didn't hit, and a list of people that were all part of the concrete plant dispute. Mm. His journal said, quote, I was willing to be reasonable until I had to be unreasonable. Unre- Sometimes reasonable <laughs> men must do unreasonable things. Okay. Oh, he, he's the done. hero we need, not yeah. the one we deserve. <laughs> then I think on that quote, that's a good uh, spot to leave off on what this story. What a stupid thing to say. Like, did I he know. steal that from, like, Biden's no. fucking, like, inaugural speech? <laughs> so that is the story of Marvin Hemeyer and his killdozer. That's killdozer. it. That's it. <laughs> you ready to see some pictures? I would love to know if he had lived, like, what kind of, uh... oh, my God, he looks... Doesn't he look so average? Like this, he could coach soccer? Or? He looks like like Kevin Nash. If Kevin Nash decided not to be a wrestler and, and decided like a to real be estate like, agent, yeah. or something, <laughs> you know, or or you like sell timeshares. You know, what? he does look a little bit like he could be a pedophile. Oh my gosh! He looks like the kind of guy who like takes like a woolen sock, an old woolen sock, and pulls like one strand out and uses that. Uh, pluck out like to floss his teeth and you're pluck just, out like turkey bits you're disgusting <laughs> you know that's gross he looks like the kind of guy like he only has ketchup and mustard and moldy mayo oh. in his fridge you oh. know in like a in a half empty like six pack of bush he looks like the kind of guy who uses just enough toilet paper to <laughs> to walk away oh but, my god but he uses his underwear to finish the job an hour later you're disgusting <laughs> you know what i mean like he digs deep with his scratches he looks like the kind of guy who has a lazy boy but you know, a fabric one not a leather one <laughs> corduroy yeah yeah a corduroy ones and he just zips and zips on it every time he jerks off oh my god okay let's get to randy savage all right what i'm trying to say is he's ugly and stupid and his name is marvin so did he not like, have a wife, no, kids, no. nothing? He just had his tools. Yeah, he just had his muffler shop and his killdozer. God, and his name was Marvin. Yeah. Holy so shit. So that's the the killdozer. That's pretty fucking impressive. Isn't that insane? Jesus, yeah, he flattened everything. In one way and out the other, And it's I guess. amazing <laughs> when you look at these pictures that it's a hardware store he got stuck in. Wow. Yeah. Seven million dollars. Yeah. In, in the 90s, so... So probably $3 billion Oh, no, billion my apologies. Now. In 2003. He took a Liberty Still, Bank. Still, that's 20 years ago. And he killed himself with a gun? Mm-hmm. He was a crazy fuck. God. What do you think of today's story? Oh, it was lighthearted. It was nice. It was <laughs> nice to not have, like, a torture and a rape and a kill, like, every once in a while. Like, the when the only person who died is the dumbass villain. Like, all right. Yeah. All because he... Just didn't want to lose access to his shop that way. Like he, he's a fucking. It wasn't idiot. the only way in and out. Yeah, what a jackass. Like it's it's just that it would block off access from his house to his shop, so he would literally have to like drive out into his shop. It's I just guess, an, I guess that you know, he was a boomer. He had a privileged life. You like know? you don't this own is, that this land. Is too much. You didn't own that land. If you wanted it, you should have bought it. Yeah, fucking dickwad. Yeah. What a dumbass. All right. Let's listen to the beautiful, erudite, intellectual musings of his machinist, Sir Randall Savage. Snap into it, Slim Jim. I repeat it for you. Snap into it, Slim Jim. Say it like him. Slap into it, Slim Jim. <laughs> <laughs> oh god I really like Cody Rhodes I like I like Roman Reigns but sometimes you just want someone who's batshit crazy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but not like like stupid crazy yeah Seth freaking Rollins is killing it I guess yeah he's pretty yeah. fucking crazy yeah 
We have video games to play. Yeah, I gotta play some Heroes we, of Might and Magic. We moved, and I unpacked The Last of Us. Yep. So. Play that and never watch the fucking show. I do want to watch the show. Play, I, like I would play Pedro the game first, Pascal. though. Yeah. We all like Pedro Pascal. Mm-hmm. All right, that's enough of this. Have a lovely weekend, folks. Take care of yourselves. Drive home safely. Bye. Bye. You can check us out on YouTube at Catam Concoction. That's C-A-T-A-M-C-O-N-C-O-C-T-I-O-N. <laughs> and on Instagram at cast underscore aghast. Remember, there's a silent H. <laughs> <laughs>